I'm coming to a close. Five areas, if we looked at the book of Acts, the book of Acts described the people of God this way, that they were people that were devoted to prayer. They were devoted to prayer. And as we're thinking about Jesus overturning things in our ministry, in our life, could we say the same about our family, about our community, about our church, and about our ministry? We are devoted to prayer. If we can say that in the affirmative, amen, praise God, go forward. If not, perhaps could Jesus be saying there's a change that needs to come so that we can be the people, again, that are devoted to prayer. Five areas, they all start with P. The first one is people. The second one is passion. The third one is priority. Fourth one, pattern. Fifth one, partnership. People, passion, priority, pattern, and partnership. First of all, prayer, increasing prayer towards spiritual renewal is not about prayer lists. It's not about requirements. It's not about sickness. It's not about disease. It's not about that last thing that went wrong. It's about people. It's about engaging the heart of people. What did Paul say when he talked about the, the Israelites and wanting to reach them? Brothers, my heart desire and prayer to God is that they might be saved. So I've just talked about people, but I'm also now talking about passion. We have to have that kind of passion. When Jesus overturned the tables, the disciples looked and said, the scripture said, Psalm 69, that it was the zeal of the Lord of hosts that is consuming him. I wonder as it relates to passion and spiritual renewal and leading others, has our passion waned? Or are we waiting for someone else? Are we hoping that someone's praying? It begins with engaging people, leaders who create a culture or atmosphere of prayer, leading others to prayer. That's very important. Leaders in prayer is to pray with them. They can catch your passion. That moves right into talking about pattern. I've got ahead of myself. People we've talked about now. Passion and then priority. Pastors and ministry leaders, you're the busiest people in the world. In the book of Acts, chapter 6, when they said the Hellenistic Jews, they're not being taken care of. We have to do something. They brought that to the apostles. And what did the apostles say? We'll stop what we're doing and take care of them. No. They said our priorities, we must give ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. They had priority. Luke says that Jesus often got away to pray. Paul said, first of all, pray. There might be many other things that you might do, but first of all, pray. Why? Because that's good and acceptable to the Lord, and because God desires that all would be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Pattern, I mentioned, we need to lead others to pray by praying with them. We prayed a, a moment ago the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That's Jesus talking about the mission. I want to encourage you as ministry leaders and as people in your families to pray with others towards your mission. Pray with others towards your mission. And then like Jesus in Gethsemane, the disciples missed it. The disciples missed it. They were asleep when Jesus was praying in his agony. Pray with others towards your agony. And then in partnership. If you don't know how to pray, ask others. The National Prayer Committee is a partner who can pray with us. And then finally, as I, come, as I come to a close, there are great models of this, of this happening. One final thing about turning over tables, we desperately need to make sure that when we're having, looking at biblical models, that we overturn those things that sap the energy from our prayers times. Turn over those tables and start again. Pastor Rick Scarborough, who I know was here, one pastor inviting other pastors to invite up their churches in prayer. Moms in prayer began by one mom asking another mom to pray for their children together. And now they're in 140 countries in every uh, state of the nation. As you go to your tables, we're going to put some questions on the, on the board here for you to, to answer. The first is, are our lives in places of worship, places where we do our business or where we're focused on the Father's business? Secondly, how will you take a stand and pray your prayer in your community? And then thirdly, how are you using your
your position and influence to encourage spiritual renewal in your organization. Thank you, Thomas and Gail. Let's uh, express our appreciation.